Welcome to the Raise with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where life of Jesus meets yours. In this episode of the Raise with Jesus podcast, we have our sermon from this past Sunday, July 19th, talking about why we have the rest that we do in Jesus. And after you give it a listen, be sure to check out the show notes for the discussion guide, either to review the content on your own or with somebody who has also listened to the sermon. Feel free to hit that share button to share with somebody who would also benefit. Here goes. Dear fellow redeemed, we consider especially our gospel lesson today from the gospel of Matthew beginning in chapter 11. Jesus talks about rest and Jesus talks about a yoke. And perhaps as we get started, it would be good ever so briefly to talk about a yoke. I'm not talking about what you saw in your scrambled eggs this morning. I'm talking about this, this long wooden bar that might be used for carrying something or for yoking two oxen together to pull a cart or to pull a plow. Or maybe the the yoke is placed on a horse as that horse then pulls the cart. And in other areas of the world with less access to clean water, they might have a yoke, a large, long wooden bar with a cutout for your neck, for your shoulders, that could rest on your shoulders Two heavy buckets of water could hang from the yoke as they go down to the river or whatever the water source may be and bring that back. And Jesus says today, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How? How can this big heavy piece of wood, chunk of wood that is for carrying heavy burdens, how can this be easy and how can this be light? That's what we're talking about. How? And my guess is that you already know, that you already understand, and and I could just spend like a good two or three minutes, although we might spend a little bit more than that. We could just spend a couple of minutes and uh, and explain it, and you would say, okay, I get it now. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks so much. I'll just fast forward to the end of this. But how can the yoke of Jesus be light? He explains for us, and you know this, that the rest you have in Jesus refreshes you for each and every day. That the rest you have for Jesus refreshes you for service to others, and it all kind of comes down to this one big idea that, yes, God demands perfection. That, yes, God demands perfection that we love him above all things. And yes, you and I worry. That's the heart of the matter, isn't it? Jesus says, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and you will find rest for your souls. All you who are weary and burdened And fill in whatever other adjective you would like to use there. All of you who worry. All of you who are frustrated. All of you who are stressed. All of you who get wrapped up in silly internet arguments that six months ago would have never crossed your mind. All of you. All of us. Who have a loved one that we care about. And we know that that loved one isn't exactly in the prime of health. And then all of us who hear or saw our governor talk about, talk about escalating cases again, and all of us getting weary and frustrated and saying, when is this going to end? And how is this going to end? And what does normal really look like? And Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And that's the irony here, that you probably already know that rest. That you probably already know that rest, but whether you or I take advantage of that rest is another matter. Whether you and I get distracted from that rest is another problem. And so the question before you and me today, the question that this this text, that this reading um, proposes to us today, do you feel rested? Do you feel refreshed? Or, on the contrary, do you wish things were different? And now you're frustrated, 
You're trying to keep your chin up, trying to be patient with the kids, trying to uh, figure out how to do your job and wait for others to figure out how you should do your job, and trying to figure out where exactly you fall on this comfort level of uh, what, is, uh, what is my exposure going to be. And maybe just throwing up your hands and saying, for heaven's sakes, Pastor Hagen, can't we talk about something else? This has been all over the news and all over my social media feed for who knows how long. Five months? I just need some time away from it. But the heart of the matter is that if you see what it is that makes you angry, what it is that makes you frustrated, what it is that makes you disappointed, what it is that makes you weary and worried and burdened. Whatever it is, I don't know, I don't know your own life as well as you do, obviously, although I can make some guesses, and scripture is pretty clear about the natural condition of our human hearts and the natural condition of life in a sinful world, but I don't know your specific details. But think, what is it that has gotten you frustrated or angry? What is it that has made you stressed? Maybe made you respond, led to your responding in a way that is totally out of character, totally uncharacteristic, and totally not who you want to be. What is it that made you worried and has made you weary and it makes you just kind of look around and say, for heaven's sakes, this looks like, uh, this just looks like a movie. I want life to be normal again. Why do we feel like this? The worry, the weariness, the stress, the frustration, the uncertainty. It's not because we don't know where to find our rest. It's the other part of the reading. <laughs> the part of the reading today that isn't talking about a yoke and weariness and burdens. The part of the reading that Jesus began with um, earlier here. This way, you've got to flip back to it here. Um, the part of the reading that he said earlier. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. We understand that. Jesus has revealed his rest to us in the cross and the empty tomb. He has placed this rest upon our hearts in holy baptism and placed this rest into our mouths and into our lives through holy communion. We get that. We know that. But why do we get so frustrated and angry, weary and worried? It's the other verse. Sandwich in between. Verse 27. All things have been committed to me by my Father. And he goes on to explain that a little bit and what that means. But he says, All things have been committed to me by my Father. And we buy the lie that we are in control. We buy into the idea that life is simply a series of cause and effect. And maybe it's slightly more, more complex than your standard simple cause and effect, but we buy into the idea that if I just do this, then that will happen, and if I don't do that, then this won't happen. And we tell ourselves that if I follow all these parameters and if I have this proper understanding and if I have all the knowledge and the understanding and the information and the guidelines that I need, then... All of these bad things that I'm worried about won't happen. And all of these things that are outside of my control aren't going to bother me because I have done everything to block them out, to mitigate their risk, and to say that I have done what I can and I have control. Jesus says, <clears throat> Excuse me. All things have been committed to me by my Father. The illusion of control is only going to leave you frustrated and focused on all that you can do, should do, maybe could do, rather than focusing on the one who has done it all 
and who holds all things in his hands. And this one who has done it all has delegated a tiny bit of his all-encompassing responsibility into your hands. Responsibility that, yes, is limited in scope and limited in time. Responsibility like, like raising your children. Limited in scope. You aren't called to raise other people's children. You're called to raise, raise your own. Limited in time. There will be a time when they move out of the house and move on to their own houses. And yes, you will always be their parent. But your responsibility toward them will have changed. The one who has all authority in heaven and on earth, the one who says here in verse 27 that all things have been committed to me by my Father, this one has committed some of that responsibility a tiny little bit into your hands and your life. A tiny bit of responsibility when he has provided you with a job, when he has provided you with um, maybe space to grow some food, when he has provided you with a roof over your head, when he has provided you with all of these things that, yes, are blessings and also all of these things that are our responsibilities. Limited in scope, limited in time. But we run ourselves ragged by buying into the lie that I'm in control and we run ourselves ragged, we're wearing ourselves out, obsessing about all the things that are outside of our responsibility and outside of our control. So much, so much that we don't have the time, the energy, the patience, or the attention to glorify God by the proper use and proper care of the things he has actually given to us in our scope and for this period of time the blessings and the responsibilities that he has placed into our hands, placed into your hands, as the one unique person in all of human history with the specific responsibilities that you have, the specific hats that you wear, and all of their attendant responsibilities. It's easy to get run down. It's easy to get run down when we obsess about life that is outside of our control. And we get frustrated and bitter, worried, stressed about all the things that we can't control, and we forget about those specific responsibilities that God has given to us, and only to each of us individually. That Jesus has revealed his wisdom to us, that Jesus has revealed his knowledge to us, his wisdom, that he alone provides us rest, and that he has provided us complete rest in his death and in his resurrection. He has placed complete rest in your heart and in your life through your baptism, and he continues to do so through Holy Communion, offered here on Wednesdays, 7 to 8 p.m. But we weary ourselves, burdening ourselves, with worries that aren't ours to carry. And in the process, God is not glorified. Christians don't speak lovingly. The blessings pass by unthanked. The responsibilities pass by unfulfilled. The heart is run down with all of the worry all of the weariness and Christians end, end up fretting like the rest of the unbelieving sky is falling world as though nobody can be in control despite our best efforts you know what science has failed us medicine has failed us and what can we do now what can we do now to exert more control if only our government would do this and if only our government wouldn't do that the world says the unbelieving world screaming like the sky is falling and Christians get wrapped up in that. All of the problems that are outside of our responsibilities, the people we're responsible to, the blessings that God has placed in, into our lives. And God says, here are these blessings, and here are the responsibilities. Now put them together in prayer and be a good steward of these things. Don't worry about those don't worry about those. But Satan redirects Christian love and redirects what would be the glory of God seen in a 
in a world gone crazy, (laughs) Satan redirects that into inward-focused selfishness, envy, and arguing. All things have been committed to Jesus, yet we want them committed to us. We run ourselves ragged, trying to adjust, forgetting that all things have been committed to him. And only a teeny tiny little bit has been committed to us. How burdensome, wearisome, is it any wonder that Christians seem to be just as stressed, just as frustrated, just as run down, and just as hopeless? And yes, I understand that there's not the social connection that God designed us to have. And Jesus has the answer. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and all things that have been committed to me by my Father. So come to me, that he has the responsibility for governing this world, for restraining evil, for allowing the preaching of the gospel to continue until this ball of mud stops spinning. And he returns on the clouds of heaven on the date and the time that he has chosen. He says, all things have been committed to me by my Father, so come to me as a result of Jesus having all things in his hands of Jesus taking care of all the worry that you wonder about and all the frustration that you feel. That, yes, some of that belongs to you. But the only way you can have rest is by coming to Jesus. And so when Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, what he's talking about is the fact that, yes, nothing in this world will be truly inside of your control, but except for our sin. (laughs) But you know what? Jesus took that sin upon himself. Jesus took all of our sin upon himself. All of our faithless worrying, even our proper Christian concern, he suffers alongside He took all of our sin upon himself, all of the worrying, all of the fretting, all of the arguing, all of the frustration, all of the wanting to be in control and not being in control and running like a little hamster on a wheel, wondering why we are worn out and burdened by this lack of control. But Jesus himself has carried your sin in mind. So that he says that he has given you rest, rest, forgiveness, relief. That he has forgiven you for our incessant desire to be in control, to have things go our way on our schedule, that he has forgiven us We're pushing him off his throne and trying to take his seat and then wondering why we're so stressed out as we try to play God. And he says, come to me. I have all things in my hands. All things have been committed to me by my Father. So come here for rest. And that rest is as sure and certain as the empty tomb on Easter Sunday, as the grass standing back up on the Mount of Olives and at the Mount of Ascension. That rest is as sure and certain as the rest that your loved one now enjoys with Jesus in heaven forever. That rest is as sure and certain as Jesus himself returning with the angels and the saints to the voice of the trumpet call of God and the four horsemen of the apocalypse that we talk about in Revelation Um, those four horsemen will finally stop their coursing through the world. The rest that Jesus gives is as sure and certain as the water on a baby's head and the taste of bread and wine on your lips, together with the the body and blood of Jesus. Think of it this way. You think of a beautiful Ohio summer. 89, 90, 91 degrees. 
roughly the same humidity, 89, 90, 91. And you just got done doing some work outside. It was overdue, but it needed to be done. The sun is really bright. Your arms are a little bit more tanned than they had been just a few hours previously. And the sweat is starting to get into your eyes and you think to yourself, man, (laughs) glad that uh, I'm not out here every day like this. And I hope I don't see somebody that I know right now because it's a little ripe. And you sit down. Maybe find a nice shady spot and there's that little little brief wind, a little gl- glimpse, what's the word, a little breeze that kind of floats through the air. And somebody hands you a glass of lemonade. The ice clinks in the glass. You can smell the, the lemonade, that it's not country time, it's at, at the very least the lemon juice concentrate from Kroger, or maybe even fresh squeezed lemons. And the condensation drips off the glass onto your lap. And you take a sip. (sighs) Smell the lemons. Taste the sugar. Rest. Has it felt? Have you ever felt? like you've been slaving away out in the sun all by yourself running yourself weary and burdened run down and worked up saying words that you really wish you hadn't and that you perhaps normally wouldn't and worrying about all of these things that are outside of our control to the point where the, the blessings that God has given into our lives are seen as another problem to consider. Another responsibility that I have to keep up with or else. And it's so burdensome. And Jesus hands you a drink. Not a clinking glass of lemonade, but his own blood. He snacks, hands you a snack. Not uh, you know a popsicle or an ice cream bar, but his body. He says, "Dear Christian, do you see how hard you're working?" He does, and he wants you to rest, to see that your life is complete in him, that your responsibilities are complete in him, that all the things that are outside of your control are in his control, and that rest from Jesus means refreshment. For others, rest from Jesus refreshes us for others. Rest from Jesus that you experience at the Lord's table in the Word just the same way as and even better than a glass of cold lemonade on a hot and humid day. Rest from Jesus refreshes us for others to say that, yes, I don't have to worry about all those things because all things have been committed into the hands of Jesus, not into the hands of me. But that rest from Jesus refreshes us for others. To say that here are the the people, the blessings, the specific responsibilities that Jesus has given to me to be a blessing. And he's given me to be a blessing to them. So, Lord, give me rest. I need it. It's been a long five months. And might be another long five months, or who knows, until that day that Jesus returns with the promise of eternal rest. But until then, until then, find your rest in Jesus because he refreshes you for others so that you can speak words of love, act with loving intent and loving action, providing care for the blessings that Jesus has provided to you and paying special attention to the responsibilities that are uniquely yours. Why? This is the yoke that he has given to you for all the burdens that you carry in this life. And that yoke is rest in Jesus. 
so that you can be refreshed for others. Amen. Again, thanks so much for joining us here at Threes with Jesus podcast. I know that um, you have a lot of choices out here in podcast land, and I really appreciate that you've taken a few minutes with us today. Be sure to give us a like or a follow on Facebook, and check out the show notes once again for that discussion guide, either on your own or with somebody else. If you have any questions or comments, all my contact information is there as well. God bless your day.